the president will most likely ask Raila to back his re-election bidding. But why is Mrima very important in every electioneering period? We have a language. Mrima, Mulima. Mrigiji. Kuna Mlima. Kisawa usiguze Mrima. Kuna Mlima na Mrima. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rigiji says... Na, naona kuna kugongana kwa lugha. Kwa, kwa Rigiji, kwa hii lugha ya streets. Mm -mm. Eh, Inaitwa Mrima. Mrima. Ya Rigiji, oh, hiyo okay. kwa kumbuzwa hivi, inaitwa ah. Mrima. So we a very warm welcome on this 10th September 2024. I am your host, Esther Nyonje, and good to see you here. Now, today is the second day of mourning the children who lost their lives to the Asun. And it's quite a tragedy, I would say. And I'm just thinking, Asun, when it's really close to the exam period, the connection in that, but here we send our condolences to the families that have lost their children, the bereaved families, receive our condolences and we hope that God will keep you through this trying moment. Now, away from that, uh, I am joined by one of the best brains in this country, I would say. Ah, okay. Are you realizing it right now? <laughs> I haven't realized it even right now. Come on, you have done so much for this country. For those who don't know, but I would say in this space you would need no introduction. Okay. But we have the younger audience that would want to know uh, Dr. Barak Muluka. Karibu sana. Asante Esther. Listen, listen to this. He is a seasoned publishing editor and a strategic and political communications and leadership communications consultant. He's also a writer in politics and a regular commentator on social and public affairs on the global platform. So we are so honored to have you here today. My privilege to be here, Esther. <laughs> so I see you're also a graduate of the University of Leicester with a PhD in politics and international relations, as well as a graduate of the University of Nairobi with MA qualifications in armed conflict and peace studies. Wow. PGD, mass communications, and BA in linguistics and English. Yes. When I grow up, I want to be like you. <laughs> <laughs> you are perhaps already better than me. You know, I'm realizing that in this field, am I really? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, I don't see. have all this. Yeah. I have not gone to the you, University you, you, of Leicester yet. Leicester. Le Leicester. Oh, Leicester. Yes, Leicester. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yeah. Now, I'm realizing, Barack, that uh, people in our field, especially young people in this field and also other professional fields, might need mentorship. Mm -hmm. Someone to hold their hand and mm -hmm. uh, take them through the ropes of developing in their career. Yes. What do you think about that? Because yeah. I feel like most of us have just been left to figure out things on our own. And, you know, it's really tough. Well, we all sit at somebody's feet and learn. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the time when you leave the training institutions, you are imagining that uh, you are arriving ready-made. Mm. But when you get there, you find that uh, there's You're a lot even of half made. <laughs> learning to be done. In the old days or older days, when uh, employment opportunities were there, you got into the enterprise or into a state agency or straight into the public service. And there would be those who had gone ahead of you. You would learn from them without anybody telling you that uh, they were mentoring you. Mm -hmm. You would learn to borrow from you the strands of the ropes. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the fullness of time, you'd probably become the new guru with, uh, again, a train of new people for you now to be the one to bring up. Mm -hmm. Today, when um, young people leaving training institutions have got to grope around for their own space and uh, to find their own relevance, mm -hmm. we could say that uh, you are hugely learning on your own. Literally, you are You're on your own. Being uh, self-taught, mm -hmm. and uh, which has got uh, its own advantages because uh, 
in the full order of time, you are more stable mm -hmm. because you have learned to fend for yourself from mm -hmm. the word go. You don't spend a lot of time worrying and talking about uh, yourself being unemployed or jobless because you define the job mm. for yourself. Mm -hmm. You define employment for yourself. Yes. And you grow up through the spaces when you come across those uh, who have uh, gotten straight into employment, into the corporate world, uh, should they have the misfortune of uh, leaving those spaces, they now need you to hold their hand because mm. they do not know how to be independent. So there are pros and cons. And, cons. and the cons, well, times are different. And now, in relation to that also, straight to the Gen Z revolution, because I know you have a nose Mm -hmm. for the politics of this country. Now, most of us are stuck in the middle wondering, okay, what's the direction? So we start from the bottom, the Gen Z are revolution. Are you a Gen Z? Am I a Gen Z? <laughs> 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 well, they say Gen Z is from, um, which age? From Let's say people born around 97, 2012. 2012. So definitely I wasn't born in 97. Uh -huh. But were ladies do not in, say that ages. Were you born in 2012? We shall see. <laughs> <laughs> now, was it was this a wild goose chase? Did it hit the target? Is uh, Gen Z a new constituency? How can it be harnessed? Uh, first of all, we need to ask: Does it need to be harnessed? Yeah, because we need to harness good things. If we say it's a good thing, then it probably needs to be harnessed. Now, this is a a, a response to uh, social, economic, and political realities within the environment by persons of a, a certain generation who are not happy with the turn of things or the unfolding of things in their country, who are worried about uh, their present situation and mm -hmm. about their futures. Mm. And I'm using futures within the pluralistic uh, context. And therefore, is it a, a good thing? My answer would be a straight yes. Yes. Uh, because I think there's been an abdication of uh, responsibility. People who are occupying positions of uh, power, especially in the political leadership, national political leadership, seem to either have forgotten what their role is, or if they have not forgotten, then they have never known in the first place what their role is. Mm. And therefore, they need a, a wake-up call. And uh, Gen Z has been exactly that. I would not call the activities that I have seen the Gen Z's involved with a revolution or revolutionary or revolutionist mm. uh, as such, I think uh, they are reformist. Reformist in the sense that uh, they are asking for um, people who are in power to do mm. what is expected mm. Of them, does it end up rather asking? than rather, yes, they have asked. They haven't attempted to take over and to do it uh, themselves, mm. to overthrow the established uh, order mm -hmm. and to replace it with uh, another order. They have been telling President uh, Ruto, "We want you to end corruption. We want you to end uh, splurging of." Uh, Public resources. Public resources. We mm -hmm. want you to win, to end wastage. We want uh, to see an end to theft mm -hmm. uh, or corruption, as they call it. We want you to dismiss your cabinet and put the another one. That, that, that is a, a reformist, mm -hmm. almost a evolutionary approach mm -hmm. to constructive change, if you want. Mm -hmm. uh, a revolution is something a lot more militant, mm. something that uh, is saying we have lost confidence in the establishment, we have lost confidence 
in the systems, mm. in the instruments, mm. and we want them to be thrown overboard completely, it would probably even be advocating for violent change mm. yeah, that are, is uh, cataclysmic. Yeah? We haven't uh, seen that, and uh, uh, revolutions do not uh, get stopped because those in the establishment have made certain cosmetic changes, like mm -hmm. the ones that uh, we have seen. Revolutions would go on until they push you completely over the cliff. A good case uh, in point would be the case of uh, the Russian Revolution, mm -hmm. uh, 1907, mm -hmm. I believe it must have been, uh, when the Russian monarchy, the Russian monarchy was overthrown mm -hmm. by the people. They had been uh, uh, a reformist monarch, mm -hmm. the Nicholas II, who was carrying out certain changes, mm -hmm. certain reforms, but the people did not find them satisfactory. And so they eventually overthrew that uh, established order. I think it, the correct year is 1917. Yeah? Mm -hmm. When uh, you have uh, Vladimir Lenin um, with his uh, friends like uh, Leon Trotsky, uh, Joseph Stalin mm -hmm. and others mm -hmm. overthrowing the established order, mm -hmm. establishing the Russian monarchy mm -hmm. and bringing in place okay. a communist state that mm -hmm. you call a revolution. A revolution. So, so what we have with the Gen Z is a reformist. Uprising. Uprising. A reformist uprising and but they are even telling the person in power Maliza Wende. Yes. They are looking forward to a new guard mm. being in place uh -huh. in uh, 2027. Even now. And you see I am looking at it and wondering where where are the teeth that are gonna bite? because it is not just going to be something, and they did something, that we, we I, I'm part of that also, we made some progress. Mm -hmm. We asked the president to drop the finance bill. He did, we asked the president to uh, make an overhaul in his cabinet, he did. But you see, uh, it feels like we are toothless dogs. No, that is we that is the, the teeth to bite. That is that the, we will just keep on talking and talking, and you see, after all that, we now came with the government of national unity. Now, how do you fight a whole government with state machinery, with all the resources, with all the intel, with your reformist attitude? That's exactly what I mean when I say it is reformist rather than mm. revolutionary. Uh, you asked for certain things to be done, and some were done or appeared to have been done. Um, if you were talking of yourselves as uh, revolutionaries, then we would say your revolution was stolen, and it was stolen by those in the system, the counter-revolutionaries, and they are marching on. And it's because basically the agencies have not had a clearly fine-tuned agenda. Mm. You must know very clearly mm. what it is that uh, you want. Mm -hmm. The Gen Zs have not had uh, clearly defined leadership. That's that lack of leadership. Is it a strength or a weakness? It is a major weakness, a fundamental weakness mm. because leadership defines the goals, mm -hmm. it defines the methods, 
it assesses the stages along the path mm -hmm. and sees whether you are still focused. There are people who are responsible, whom everyone else can go to and tell them that you are not taking us in the direction that uh, you want. Mm. The Gen Zs have not had that. And the Gen Zs also made another very fundamental, in fact, I would call it fatal mistake, that of ring fencing the so-called revolution and defining who can participate and who cannot, saying that this is ours. <laughs> Everyone else uh, stay out. Mm -hmm. But that is how it is going to fail. Mm -hmm. The energy of youth must find intersection with the wisdom and experience of age that the revolution and the generation, therefore, become a spirit, it becomes a generation of ideas, mm. a generation of minds. Mm -hmm. In indeed, ideas are generated, mm. yeah? Mm -hmm. And if we are generating ideas, mm. we become of one generation, and that generation is a generation of change. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you kind of become also narrow-minded, short-sighted mm. and say this one is uh, ours mm. we will not allow anybody else mm. into this space everyone else stay out uh, then you've got a, a proper recipe for failure for failure and uh, if you may just allow me mm -hmm. uh, where does uh, experience and wisdom come in by the time you are um, of a certain age, let's say twice the age of uh, the oldest Gen Z. Mm. Uh, the oldest Gen Z would uh, perhaps be, oh, how old? 20? 20... 22, 23. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you are 44, mm. and even 44, in my view, you are just reaching the takeoff in terms of knowledge of the world and how it functions, particularly in the political and economic environment, the mm. polity. Mm. You would now be aware of revolutions mm -hmm. in world history. You would know about the 1848 revolutions mm. in Europe. If we put that question and I don't uh, say this to embarrass you, mm -hmm. but what do you know about the 1848 revolutions <laughs> in Europe? I will have to find out. <laughs> you will have to find out. Mm -hmm. uh, at our age and experience, we would tell you that uh, the year 1848 has gone down in the history of Europe as the year of revolutions. Mm. And there were revolutions that saw lots of uh, young people like uh, yourselves um, engaging the governments mm. in Europe because of uh, the social and economic uh, uh, circumstances. The revolutions actually happened in 50 different European countries. They began in France and Italy and spread throughout the rest of Europe, but they failed. Mm. And the historians have referred to the year 1848 as um, a turning point when the history of Europe did not turn. The monarchies that uh, the revolutionaries wanted to overthrow eventually uh, overcame the revolutionaries. And you would ask the question, what was the reason for leadership or absent absence of leadership mm. they were mostly spontaneous mm -hmm. and the grievances were of fairly generalized nature mm. and the combination of all these factors mm -hmm. so uh, monarchical europe mm -hmm getting back mm -hmm. to where it had always 
been. Mm. So uh, the, the, there is always that experience that you need to think about the American Revolution, why it succeeded. Yeah, you have the American Revolution, the period 17, 75, 17, 78. Mm. You have to think about the Mexican Revolution, mm. 19, the Arab Spring, 1910. The Arab Spring is part of the overall failure. Mm. If you use that as your point of reference, mm -hmm. then you are quoting failure. You probably need to think about the Iranian Revolution that overthrew the Shah Mohammad Reza Pahlavi dynasty, 1978, 1979. Mm. So the youth choosing to be fairly short-sighted, sighted, mm. and fairly narrow-minded, are seeing just a, a, piece a piece of the horizon, and Tiny they are not beauty. able to. So mm -hmm. again, conclusion and summary, the energy and spirit of youth must find an intersection with the wisdom and experience of age. You had that intersection between age and wisdom. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we go Be again. Because there's age on both sides. Mm -hmm. On one side, there's youthful age. Mm -hmm. On the other side, there's older age. Mm -hmm. And the older age may not be as energetic as the youthful age. You need the energy of youth to run in the streets, mm. to do the protests, mm. to carry the placards. And the wisdom. To engage the wisdom of the older of people. The old to give you the roadmap, okay. to tell you about the cataracts and yes. the waterfalls mm -hmm. ahead mm -hmm. and how to evade them or to overfly them mm -hmm. or to go through them or to go underneath them. And that is where we talk yeah. about the intersection. Intersection between the energy of youth and the wisdom and experience of older age. Right. Thank you for letting us know that. Now, moving on, you see what is happening. That this factory setting to the new thing you are talking about. Yes, uh, it is possible. First, I think uh, it's a good thing that uh, the Gen Zs, the millennials, and even some of the Generation Y. Mm have taken a lot of uh, beating in a harsh economic uh, environment. It's going to help them to wake up. It is a, a good wake up call for them mm -hmm. that uh, they have got to start thinking because uh, hard times call for hard uh, thinking and hard uh, decision making. And we start moving away as um, a new generation within the context of my think of, of, of what generations and generating thoughts and ideas is, from thinking that uh, we must vote for somebody from our, our tribe. Mm. That when Mr. Gadi Gashakwa talks about the mountain, then we look at ourselves as people of a certain tribe or collection of tribes from the mountain. And we're asking who are we from the mountain going to vote for us, our man, that uh, Kalenjin people look at uh, President Ruto as their man, our man, we must protect him and we must protect this government because it's uh, our government. It's not your government. They're mm. not eating with you. Mm. When they come up with these mega plans, Adani, mm. uh, I don't know, they come up with uh, uh, Kimurer, Mm. and uh, Aurora and all these others, they are not eating with you. Mm. The things which they are doing through procurement and, and the rest of that. And you, we have got to redefine ourselves. What is our notion mm. of our people? Mm. Our people must be reimagined re, 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 re as people who think the way we think, as people who aspire for that which we aspire. 
And we have seen that uh, a plus for the Gen Z's is that uh, they were saying they want to see themselves as being tribeless, but they cannot afford to see themselves as leaderless. There must be leaders. There must be some mechanisms mm. of saying these are our recognized leaders. And then there must be some instruments of monitoring that leadership mm -hmm. and calling them to account. Mm -hmm. And if uh, they are not being accountable, of removing them mm -hmm. and replacing them. And if there are some people who are just being a nuisance mm -hmm. that uh, they think they should remove them because they are the ones who should be there. And that selfishness of theirs should be able to be seen through the instruments that are put in, 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 in place and therefore new thinking, new revolutionary thinking mm. and this country must undergo a revolutionary change of mind that you're not going to say oh, we Luos are now in government. That, that, that's one of the most stupid thing, things it is. Uh, I have had, one of the most stupid things mm -hmm. where people saying that uh, now Tuko kwa serikali. <laughs> When did you get into <laughs> Serikali to start? Working at Tunesia, Tunesia, you mambo. Hatu sasa sisi tumeachana tuko kwa Serikali. Ulingia kwa Serikali tarehe ngapi? Mm -hmm. Na umefaidika kwa njia zipi? Mm. Kenyans must stop being used as cannon fodder. Stop being used as gun powder by the political elite that positions the tribe as their cannon and cannon fodder, mm. and that they can mobilize it for violent action to the extent that what they want for themselves mm. as individuals mm. is not uh, being delivered. And when the other person on the other side who is using his tribe as a cannon fodder sees that, uh, okay, the environment is getting uh, trouble, then they come together. You asked about Odinga and Ruto coming together. Together. This and is, is, is even, even talk to us about, talk to us about with this, you know, at, you get to a point and realize that um, then let things happen. Now we already have the cabinet secretaries there in place. Do you think they're going to perform? Do you think they're going to deliver? Deliver politicking for aside, de deliver for to Kenyans because we have education the, crisis, we have health crisis, we have debt crisis. Is this going to work? It's not our cabinet, it is Ruto and Odinga's cabinet. So, when we talk about delivery, the cabinet has not been fashioned to deliver for Kenyans, it's been fashioned to deliver for President Ruto and Ruto Raila and, Raila and his Odinga. allies. So they are not his allies. Mm. They are his instruments. Okay? All these things you are seeing are God's bits of wood mm. where uh, Raila Odinga and William Ruto are the gods. And everybody else is a bit, a little piece of wood wow. in, in their hands. Wow. <laughs> and that's why they can be removed. And they can just be sucked when the going is bad mm. and be replaced. And the ones who are replaced, uh, where they thought that there's a, a bit of premium left in this bit of wood, they have been reappointed somewhere. The rest doesn't matter whether they catch fire and burn. They don't matter. So fellows in cabinet who are basically God's bits of wood. That when there are issues in education to be discussed, the president himself turns up in what he calls a town hall, town hall meeting. meeting. <laughs> and as he turns up, he is the master of ceremonies. He is the inspector of schools. He is the vice chancellor of all the universities rolled into one. He is the chancellor of the universities. He is the minister for education. 
for he higher education. <laughs> principal secretary for higher education, for basic education, and is the one who has come to field all the questions. You know? So these other things mm. are just VGT. Yeah, you're making us realize that. You're making us realize that. Yeah. Now, uh, so we forward. Way forward, as I have attempted to say, the agencies, through whatever forums that uh, they came together, must continue holding conversations. But should Ruto go? And, well, Ruto must go. When? Um, my view remains that uh, he needs to clean up his own mess. That is the starting point. When the Gen Z's were asking him to clean up his own mess, he started cleaning it up. Mm. But because they lacked uh, instruments of holding him to account, they retreated. Uh, he has gone back to the mischief. The old mess. Mm. Um, he was able to recycle the cabinet. Mm. You are having basically recycled individuals and uh, entities within the cabinet. Nothing new is going to come out of it. Um, he's gone back to behaving like Vasco da Gama. You know mm. Vasco da Gama was yes. going all over the, the world. Mm. Uh, he's resumed that and he has gone back there he, so when should he go should he go now or should he go during uh, the next election I, I, I believe in uh, democratic uh, processes unless you really feel that uh, you must uh, generate turbulence that uh, causes him to go uh, today i don't think that would be absolutely necessary but we can force his hand yeah, mm. to get certain things being done and get our act together. But he looks and, consolidated. Uh, no, he looks like and, he and, has and it's that gained consoli more strength. Con consolidation that we must disrupt. Okay. And the reason we have not disrupted it is that uh, there's no leadership. Mm. Now, if there's no leadership, even when you say he must go, mm. and we as Gen Z's, have said we are leaderless. So mm -hmm. okay. what happens after that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. we start scrambling to get into that vacuum that uh, he has vacated, and we, as we start scrambling for that vacuum that he has vacated, what happens? Mm -hmm. What lessons can we take from the French Revolution of 1789-92? It was leaderless. Yeah, mm. and because it was leaderless, when uh, the monarchy uh, collapsed in 1789, what followed was a, a reign of terror, where everyone is beheading everyone else, everyone is trying to occupy the leadership space. So that is where wisdom and leadership comes in. We cannot just go around mouthing slogans and uh, saying Ruto must go now, today. Mm. And when you ask, you say things like, oh, uh, don't ask what will happen uh, because what is happening is already terrible. That is nihilism. Mm. Yeah, believing in nothing, in disorder, it's also anarchy. Mm. Let us remove Ruto, okay. but let us remove him in an organized manner okay. that then defines the leadership that gets into place. When uh, the young people of Iran, between January uh, 1978 and February 1979, mm -hmm. overthrew the, the Pahlavi dynasty, mm -hmm. they were minded to look for the Ayatollah Ruhollah Khomeini and bring him in as the new leader of uh, the now newly established uh, Islamic Republic of Iran. When the young people of the Philippines removed uh, the Ferdinand Marcos family and dynasty, uh, they looked for Corazon Aquino, 
the widow of uh, Benino Aquino and placed her there. But that revolution also had leadership. There was a uh, Emmanuel Cardinal Sin mm. of uh, the Catholic Church who was, so to speak, the symbolic unifying uh, figure around whom the activities were happening. But in the fullness of time was the Filipino uh, revolution a success? My answer is no. That no. the same people who had ruled the, the, the Marcoses mm -hmm. and the Ramoses, uh, they came back and uh, as we speak, the president of the Philippines is uh, the son of uh, Ferdinand and Imelda Marcos, the objects of hate mm. in the 1980s. So revolutions without revolutionaries and without knowledgeable thinkers who understand how the world works and the political environment works, will not get anywhere. Mm -hmm. Well, as we finish up, Raila's bid in the A. You see, African yeah. Union Commission chairmanship. Tell us something about it. Uh, first, it's a trade off between himself and William Ruto for support. Uh, he seems to be accepting that uh, he can't make it as uh, president. Perhaps he's going to surprise us. Mm. If uh, he goes to Addis Ababa and he loses and he comes back and uh, try saying that uh, now I want to be president again, it's going to look bad, yeah? because he's making the whole thing to be about himself. And the bid itself looks like it's on a, a very rocky path uh, because of uh, the Francophonic and Islamic considerations, because of uh, President Ruto's, in my view, bad management of uh, uh, international relations at the continental level. Mm. He arrives as uh, Africa's newest president instead of giving himself a humble opportunity to get into that space and learn. Mm. He's noisy, he's showing everyone that uh, they have been doing nothing there and uh, he's the greatest thinker who has just arrived. Mm. He's uh, suddenly in the White House, mm. the United, mm. trying to see it in uh, President Biden's uh, uh, Oval Office chair. <laughs> and people are looking at him mm. at the continental level and saying, well, what mm. kind of uh, leader is this? Now, this is the person sponsoring Mr. Odinga. Mm. Uh, the continent will be watching all that very, very closely and very, very... Uh, carefully. Within the region, we have said bad things about Rwanda. Mm. A minister in the Roto government has, in public space on national TV, described President Kagame as a, a dictator, and Kagame was not uh, amused. And we say in public communications that uh, the repair must be as good as the damage. They have not gone to the same platform. Mm. to apologize to President Kagame and, and, and for calling, him a calling him a dictator. Mm. President Museveni was here a few days ago and he was telling us about uh, Babu Wino. Babu Wino was a metaphor that President uh, Museveni was employing to mm. say that as a, a consumer of intelligence, he's aware of those who are... Uh, uh, thorn in the flesh of uh, his government in uh, Kampala. And uh, they are right here. I'm saying they are around Mr. Odinga. So all these uh, factors put together mm. and even statistically taking note of the fact that of the four um, AUC chairs, three have been from Francophone, stroke Islamic, Africa. Uh, that Cordian knot is going to be a, a little difficult to break, but I wish Mr. Odinga well. Mm -hmm. I hope that uh, he makes it. Well, we end it from there. Are you vying for any elective seats? No. Why not? 
Um, I've got this seat where I am. <laughs> I think it's a good seat. I like it. <laughs> that is where we end it at. Uh, thank you for the wisdom. Thank you for the insights, the ideas. And I hope you viewers are more aware, you are informed, and you have gained the insight. Remember both the wisdom and the energy of the youth. So tune in to more conversations like this here and remember to keep on liking, commenting, let us interact, share to as many people and subscribe to this platform. Until next time, see you. Thank you, Esther.